And today I'm gonna to talk about essential testing skills, the ones you need to determine what to test. I'm a bit worried. And the things that I'm worried about are learning is not part of the way of working in many organizations. I'm worried about the state of the testing industry. It's process and standard focus. There's a lot of old stuff and well, I don't see much innovation. I also see automation addiction. Paul Holland and I did a presentation about it. So if you want to know about what I mean with that, go to the references in these slides and find our presentation. Testers lack basic skills. And that's the thing I want to talk about today. Also, testers do not know how to talk about testing. That's one of those skills, but this is a very important one. Teams and management do not know how to recognize good testing. How do you test systematically or how should we test this? This is one of the most important questions a tester has to answer. And I sometimes hear, well, we need good test design techniques like boundary value analysis or, or equivalence partition. And that's true, that, that's part, but it's only a small part. And that's, there are many techniques which aren't taught that I think are very important. And that's why I'm gonna talk about them today. If I look at excellent testing, it starts with modeling the product and the context, your testing space. Then you identify risks using the value of the application, knowing the application and those risks, you consider coverage. Where do I see things that I wanna learn more about? Then you consider oracles. Oracles are means to recognize problems. So how do you recognize problems if you see one? And then I think the biggest part of, of thinking about how should we test this is already done, but you can determine uh, your test procedures. Of course, you test the system, then you look at the results. And finally, you report these test results. And when I talk about reporting, it's not writing a report, it's talking about your test results, making sure that they meet the expectations, making sure that you have the information your team and your product owner need to take informed decisions. If I look at how people often test, it's like this. They get a user story, they read it, magic happens. They write test cases, they execute them. When they're all done and all passed, and sometimes they are not even all passed, story is done. And we pick up the next story. And this is really worrisome because testing is not about, or, or building a product is not about uh, cutting it up in stories and then when all the stories are done your product works no there's much more to it how do you design your tests well what do you need to do that and i did a presentation a couple of years ago at test bash and uh i will uh repeat uh, some parts of it but if you want to look at it go back to my presentation i also wrote a blog post about it but it's there are many different skills we need we need soft skills collaboration, communication. Testing is all about learning. We'll talk about that later. You need to know how to think. The better you think, the better your testing is. Of course, you need some testing skills. It's good to know your domain. So there are many domain skills you want to uh, want to learn. And of course, we're in IT. So some technical skills really would help you. The software development is research and development. And it's all about research and less about development. So software is very complex. It consists of millions of lines of code and there's nobody who really truly understands it. But how can you test a product if you don't know what it is? So it's all about learning your product, modeling your product, and you work with other people. So And people are complex. They're not rational, they're irrational. We have different ways of looking at things. We have different ways of thinking of things. We have different ways of communicating languages are different, uh, people are different, we introvert, extrovert, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really hard to work with other people. And then we have emotions. Well, if you catch me on a good day, I'm pretty pretty easy to communicate with, but, but then I got worried or stressed or upset and then trouble start and then we, and the communication gets even harder. And it's not only the product or the people, it's also the world around us. It's volatile, it's uncertain, it's complex, and it's ambiguous. And of course you can use these white things, the product vision and et cetera, to make it better, but still it's about learning and there's a lot of risk involved. And 
do you deliberately and explicitly think about and talk about risks with your team or your, your teammates? Well, many people don't. They do it in their head somewhere. And hey, it's, it's a complex world out there. So maybe we need to do it more explicitly. So during software development, you will deal have to deal with unknown unknowns. Because, well, quality is perception. It's, it's, everybody thinks different about uh, quality. And there are many aspects to quality. And it's not written down completely what the product should be. or uh, So, so, so it's, it's really hard. Customers and product owners sometimes don't even know or can't imagine what they want until they see it or they get it. So we have to to make minimal viable products and then and hand it to them and then talk to them. It's like, hey, do you like what you see? And also the development team and testers are part of that. Can't really imagine what customers will actually do without talking to those customers, without observing those customers. And that's what we not often do. So it's all about research, building those new insights and, and using evolutionary design and testing that helps and supports the team learning. So that's a good that's a good thing. We need to do that. Learning to deal with complexity, confusion, change, new insights, and half answers. So it's all about learning and it's dealing with risks. So testing is learning. Testing is so much more than reading design and creating and executing test cases. So, but what do you have to learn? Well, the requirements might be a good start, but how do you fully understand the product? Well, you have to play with it. You have to dive into it. You have to talk to other people because everybody has a different perspective. And you have to observe people using your product. So a good way uh, to start learning about your product is, 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 of course, the specifications, but also looking at the problem, uh, at, the, at the product, modeling it. Uh, and, and, and the way we perceive stuff is by models. And, and then look at your model and think critical about your, at your uh, models and, and use your creativity to, to learn and to, to think about how can I learn even more? And also take care of your feelings. Look at your feelings because intuition is a good start, but, but, and, and it will give you stuff, but it's not the only thing. So it's the, the combination of feelings and your thinking using mental models and since it's a very complex i would say like make them visual make create visual models of your product and beware of biases but that's a whole different story so the better your model is the better your testing will be so you perceive and you learn about stuff using mental models everything you learn everything you know is in your head and, and you're you create mental models automatically and since we deal with complex products you might want to visualize your mental models use some external memory and use a picture or a, or a diagram or a flow chart to talk about your thoughts then start questioning your model um, design actions to investigate more or to test apply critical thinking on your model and your actions, and then always work with the intention to find problems. That's what testers do. The, all the others in your team, the developers and the product owners and the analysts work with the intention to solve problems. And we're here with the intention to find problems. That's our superpower. Bad models, bad testing. Then use those models, use your knowledge, of value and risk to drive your choices, create test strategies. A test strategy is not a high over thing. It's what you want to test and how are you going to do it. And the more explicit it is, the better. And by creating and writing those down and showing them to others, you will be able to discuss your choices about coverage with your product owner, with your team, using different perspective. And also involve your product owner in making those choices. Don't let your team force you into taking decisions about your testing let work with your team because you get diversity of thinking also the more unit testing you have the better it is so that's important information talk to the developers like what are your unit testing and make sure you don't do stuff double 
creating those feedback loops to improve your thinking. Show them your models, show them your test cases and say, hey, what do you think? Create insight and overview. So help answering this important question. Are there problems that threaten the on-time successful completion of your product? So help your team and product owner to make informed decision by collecting information for them. And to be able to do this, you need to be really be able to explain and justify your testing. So here are some suggestions to talk better and to think better. I'm not going to go through it. You can look at this slide later. So what I have been talking about is collaboration and communication. It's learning. It's modeling. Using your models to analyze and to question. Use critical and creative thinking. Help your team to see where we are to answer that important questions. Are there problems that threaten the on-time successful delivery of the product? That's inside an overview. Do risk analysis to make good choices. Create test strategy to make deliberate coverage choices. Talk about your testing and talk about your evolving test strategy because it gets more, it gets a, a complete while you uh, near the end of a sprint or the end of, a, of, a, of an increment or the delivery of a product. And also beware of your mindset, be curious, be a problem solver, be a service provider. So, but those test design techniques, I mentioned them before, aren't they, aren't they impo uh, important? Of course, but these are skills you're gonna use your, to design those tests. And of course, when you have a risk analysis, when you have a test strategy, when you're starting to execute exploratory testing or start creating some, some scripts or some scenarios, then only then those design test design skills become important. And in rapid software testing, we like to talk about general test techniques because there are so many and we more or less uh, put them into categories like function testing, domain testing, etc. Uh, if you want to learn more about these, go look up the heuristic test strategy model made by James Bach and uh, there's more information on this. So use them all. Every technique finds different types of bugs and you can't do any technique perfectly. So don't stick with one uh, approach, use many approach instead of one. So the last two minutes, I'm gonna talk about how do you learn this? Well, there are two simple ways to learn it. Simple as in it's, only two words on a slide, but it's really hard to do. It's deliberate practice and it's continuous learning. So there are many trainings and formal educations like rapid server testing, exploratory testing, the BBST done by AST in America, Ministry of Testing. Uh, my company created CPAT and CSAT, also very good trainings. I'm not a big fan of TMAP or ISTQB, but there are many of these. And there's also a lot you can do in self-education, like books or blogs, or go to social media, podcast videos, communities is, is, is my go-to, go to meetup, conferences, etc. But where do you start? Well, know what you want to learn and focus on that. Second, find people that are want to learn the same thing. Find a buddy or a mentor and then start practicing. And third, reflect often. So maybe you want to write or think about your personal development thing. Who, who are you? What do you want to, what, what, what can you do? What do you want to learn? What do you need? And how do you get there? So I learned a lot from, from, from these kinds of things. And there are many ways, but learning about testing, I think learning is a social thing. So if you're doing it on yourself, that's fine. But Talk about what you've learned, reflect with others, talk about it with others. Okay, thank you. If you have questions, remarks, feedbacks, or anything, let me know. These are my contacts, and you can find me on the internet. Everything I do comes with lifetime technical support, so contact me if you have questions. Thank you.